Today, we'll talk about watersheds and how researchers can delineate watersheds. This lesson was made by Mariah Thrush and Yan Wee Fang as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science classroom. First, let's think about this statement. Every land area on the earth, regardless of its location and size, is part of a watershed. Pause the video and take a few minutes to discuss with your classmates whether you agree or disagree with the statement. Use your prior knowledge to back up your opinion. This statement is true. Every part of land on Earth is part of a watershed. This is a map across the globe showing how both water stored underground and water from precipitation flow into the oceans. In the gray sections, water doesn't flow out to the ocean but instead flows into inland areas. In the continental U.S., we have several major watersheds, the biggest being the Mississippi-Missouri watershed. Remember from the last map, all of these watersheds drain into the ocean. There are so many questions we can ask about watersheds. Here are a few that we'll be answering through the lesson, but pause the video now and talk with your classmates using what you know now. First, some vocabulary. A watershed is the area of land where all of the water that falls in it and drains off of it goes to a common outlet. William Carlson and others had a great description of a watershed in their 2004 Watershed Dynamics paper. One way to think of a watershed is to imagine a bowl. The body of water, such as a pond, is at the bottom of the bowl. The sides of the bowl represent the land draining into the pond, and the top edge is the divide that defines the boundaries of the pond's watershed. Of course, actual watersheds are not circular. Instead, they have irregular boundaries that follow the topography of the land. The watershed boundary tends to be the highest point in the watershed. Rain falling within the boundary flows towards and into the stream, while rain falling outside of the boundary flows away from the stream and into another watershed. Tributaries are streams that flow into larger streams or rivers. Large watersheds can be divided into smaller watersheds called sub-watersheds. Think of the global and U.S. maps we saw at the beginning. The global map showed the U.S. in three watersheds, but the U.S. map divided those three large watersheds into 10 sub-watersheds. So how does precipitation in a watershed travel into a stream? As rain falls onto the land, the land usually slopes into low-lying streams and lakes, which then flow into larger streams. But precipitation sometimes occurs on watershed borders and in tributaries. In this case, water flows to the lowest point, whether that point be into or outside of our focal watershed. Take a small break from the lesson and make your own watershed with household materials. Pause the video and follow these instructions to make your own watershed using the terms and concepts you just learned. From the activity, you probably notice that watersheds are 3D structures with high and low points. So how are watersheds represented on a 2D map? The answer is topographical maps. You may have heard them called topo or contour maps, too. These maps are covered in curving lines that are sometimes close together and sometimes spaced apart. Today, we're going to learn how to read topographical maps. I've highlighted some of the contour lines on this map. Purple lines denote 800 meter elevation, yellow 900 meters, and red 1,000 meters. These elevations are meters above sea level. So the elevation at the beach would be at zero meters, while mountains can be thousands of meters above sea level. As we learned before, 
the highest points in the landscape are watershed boundaries, while the lowest points are where water collects. With contour maps, we can also tell how steep the land is. In box one, the 1,000 meter contour line is far away from the 9,000 meter contour line, meaning the land slowly slopes. In box two, the contour lines are close together, meaning that the elevation is changing quickly over a small area of land, resulting in a steep hill or mountain. In steep areas, water will tend to run off the land and into streams rather than soaking into soil. Watersheds are important for humans and nature alike. Watersheds provide habitat and sources of food for other organisms. Grizzly bears depend on watersheds for food sources such as salmon, and salmon rely on healthy watersheds for high quality habitats that they require. Our drinking water flows through watersheds and the quality of the watershed influences the health of the water. Humans also have a variety of sports and pastimes that rely on rivers and lakes. You can keep your watershed healthy by keeping pollutants out of watersheds. Use non-toxic products, never dump materials down storm drains, use fertilizer sparingly, and maintain your cars to prevent oil leaks. Conserving water is also important. You can make and use rain barrels to water flower gardens and lawns with collected rainwater. Thank you for watching.